welcome back once again to the Dirty Lounge. With you as always, I am your host, the Dirty Saiyan. If you are new to the channel, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell and turn on notifications to be alerted to new content on the channel. So lately, I've had several people ask me if I could show them how to make some of the text that I use for thumbnails and other graphics arts that I do. So by popular demand, that's exactly what I will be covering today. Now, as a reminder, I too am still always learning new tricks and techniques in the programs that I use to be better, to be a better graphics artist. Um, if you take away one other thing than what I show you today, I uh, hope that it's that you need to always push yourself to improve to be better. If you see something that another graphic artist does or has done and you like that, work on trying to make something similar on your own and keep pushing until you find the way to do so. Um, look for other tutorials on YouTube. There's always something new to learn. Um, and that's true for everyone, even graphics artists pros. So before you get started, you will need to ensure that you have installed two apps for your Android phone. Uh, the first one is Pixel Lab, and the second is PS Touch CC. The first can be found on the Google App Store, but the second is an APK port over, I think originally from iOS, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless, you will need to scrub the internet to find yourself a working copy. I've had my copy forever, and the link where I originally got it, it no longer exists. So I won't tell you where to get it since I don't, I don't, um, I haven't personally vetted any of the ones that are available myself, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is download and install a font for us to use from a website that I use, and it has more more fonts than I could ever conceivably uh, need or want, and it's called FontSpace.com. Um, so the first thing, I'm, I'm there right now, and the first thing you're going to want to do is find a font that you want, um, and you're going to click on the download button to the right of it um, using the ellipses that are right next to it. If you'll notice, the one that I'm on right now is called Paladins. Um, you've probably seen this text quite often if you're familiar with, uh, with content creators like Ryudin. He uses this uh, on his thumbnails quite a bit. I've used it myself. Um, it's a really good standard, just, you know, kind of your normal uh, uh, generic, not generic, but um, it's, it's very simple. Uh, it's got a little bit of an angle to it. It's kind of cool. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you find the one that you like, you click on the ellipses, and click on download file. This one's straight regular style. Each one will tell you the individual style that it's called. So once it's downloaded, we're going to get out of there, and we're going to go into our downloads folder and it'll show you that it's an o .otf or a .ttf. Sometimes, like as in this case, it'll have both in the file name. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Um, click on the little ellipsis next to the, next to the file. Click on move to. And we're gonna go into our internal storage. Now you should have a folder called fonts. If you don't have one already created, go ahead and do so now. You can click the add new folder at the top of the list there. Um, so I already have one created. I'm going to click on fonts and I'm going to move here. So once that's done, I'm going to go into my internal storage, go into the font, the fonts folder, and I'm going to find the Paladin straight, the one that we just did right there. So um, there will be some uh, some of the downloads you do on the website. It'll it'll give you a .zip folder, and it'll have several of these uh, of the same font but different types like see I have paladin semi-italic and paladin straight there'll be like a paladin bold or a paladin um, uh, uh, outline there's just all kinds of different font styles for each individual font and if you get a zip folder what you're gonna see is it's gonna look very much like the ones I have at the top here where it says bangers font or gang bangers font um, you'll You'll click on it and it'll show you the, the uh, .ttf or .otf files inside of it. You're going to extract those back into your folder and then when you do that, before you click OK, there is typically an option with a little checkbox that you can mark to delete the zip folder um, after it's done extracting. I like to do that because it keeps my folders clean. I actually should have deleted both of these already. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and close this out and we are gonna go straight into Pixel Lab. 
Now, if you'll notice, um, I get a confirmation asking me if I want to auto, you know, there's an auto save for my last session. Do you want to recover it? This won't happen if this is the first time you're opening the program, obviously, because you have nothing saved. Um, so we're just going to click cancel. And this is the standard um, that you see, the default that it pops up with. We've got a plain green background canvas with a new text text box all ready to go. <clears throat> um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to the ellipses at the very top right corner and change the image size. I like to use the standard for a high def, uh, a high def thumbnail, which is 1920 width by 1080 height. Go ahead and click OK. If you'll notice, the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Uh, now, now that we've got our, uh, we've got that all squared away, we're going to double click inside of our text box, and we're going to change that text. In my case, I'm just going to put example and click OK. You can write whatever you want. Uh, again, this we're just we're just uh, uh, showing you how this is done. All right. Next thing I like to do. If you look at the top on the menu bar, there is a grid pattern. You're going to click on that icon, and that's going to give us an overlay grid on top of our canvas. If you click on the little uh, magnet in the bottom middle there, this will allow us to snap any of our objects that we create to the lines. It makes moving things around very simple and very precise. Now you can click on this little uh, grid settings and click on the little circle all the way to the right here. And you can change the number of horizontal and vertical lines that you want to use. For the purposes of this tutorial, it's not necessary, but if you ever want to, you can do those. Um, so now you notice we have our text, but it's just really simple text. There's uh, nothing really special about it. It's just, you know, very basic. Click on the uh, the A icon at the very bottom tab, and these are our text options. And you can scroll this menu bar left to right, and there's lots to do. All right. Now the first thing we want to do is set our font, right? Now you'll have three different options here at the top. You have the fonts. These are all the basic standard fonts that come default with the program. There's quite a few. And then there's my fonts, which when you first download this program, this will all be empty. You haven't downloaded any fonts yet. You will click on the little uh, uh, paper with a T on it with a plus right here in the upper right corner. And you're going to navigate into the fonts folder and find the font that you want. So whatever you downloaded earlier from the website that I was showing you, you can download it here. Uh, I've already done a, a bunch of these, so I don't need to add any more. But once you do that, it'll show up here. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is select bangers. That's what I wanted to use. Now, if you'll notice, the text here, the E at the very end is cut off with the text box. So to fix that, make it look right, we're going to slide over and find padding. And typically, I like to set this at 30 on the left and right padding. And this gives us plenty of wiggle room between the text and the, the border of our text box, so it doesn't cut off any letters. Now, once you've done that, I like to recenter. And then you click on size and set it to whatever you want. I think in this case I'll be doing like 275. That looks good. Now, <clears throat> before we go any further, you'll notice how uh, the text has uh, is kind of close together. So you can change that by going to the spacing. And if you have multiple lines of text, let's, let's say there was there was things below example, like I had another line of text that says something else, that would be line spacing and that'll change the distance between those. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're only going to be working with the spacing of the letters themselves. And we're just gonna go maybe 
and maybe three. Yeah, we don't want we don't want to get it too far apart, but we want a little bit of wiggle room, maybe a little bit more actually. Yeah, four. Okay, five. All right. Once that's done, you will click on the check mark button on the right side, and you'll notice the default text is always going to start with white. Now you can change this color by going to the menu bar again for the text and we're going to change color. Now here you have several options. You can use a regular plain color. There's a lot of preset colors that are already ready to use right here. Uh, there's you know probably a couple dozen colors or you can do what I like to do and make your own color using the color wheel using hex values. I like to do this because my colors are precise and they're always the same. Um, and in this case, we aren't going to do plain colors. I find that kind of boring. I've moved on past that for the most part. Uh, I don't use it all the time. I do occasionally, but it's kind of rare at, these, at this point. Um, the next option you can use is gradient, which is what I like to use you use a bunch of different colors in a different sequence across the text from top to bottom, left to right, um, from inward to outward. There's many different ways you can do the gradients. Um, if you click on the little plus next to all these presets and you look at the top, you will see there is left to right, top to bottom, uh, diagonal, there's inward to outward. There, there's, and you can mess with the, all of those settings by using these two dots that are separated by a arrowed line or connected by an arrowed line. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select this preset here, black to, to white, and we're going to we're going to take her with this one. Uh, the first thing I like to do is take the the black node all the way to the left bring it into the center and just to the right and then you're going to do the opposite with the white node on the other side and bring it just in front of the black one. So now we have two tones on our gradient and they're separated by a hard line. Uh, I like to call this the ground and horizon method. So this is how I start my gradients. Now um, whatever you have selected you can uh, add nodes to this and if you have more than two nodes you can click the minus to, to remove nodes that you have selected. These little arrows allow you to um, very finely tune move the nodes across the slider but you can always just use your finger to slide them that's typically what I do. Um, the icon at the very end is the paint option and that allows us to change the color of our nodes. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to move it all the way to the left and we're going to click on the paint and I'm going to make it a pure red using hex values which is 255 red 0 green 0 blue and there it is. If you see it's starting to look kind of like a sunset type of uh, type of gradient here and we're going to click on with that selected we're going to click on the arrow again and this time we're going to change it to an orange and that will be pretty close to 255 for red 135 for green, 0 for blue gives us a nice orange pretty cool now we click on the white one and click plus again I'm gonna move this all the way to the end and I'm going to make this color Let's make it a really light purple, shall we? Um, let's see, it's going to be 255 blue and maybe like a maybe like a 200 on the red. It's kind of a light purple there, right? Uh, we're going to add another one. And this one kind of did our job for us. Let's just see what the... Uh, Okay, that's not what I wanted to do actually. We'll make this a little bit darker on the purple. So blue 255, and we'll make this about 135, and this will give us more of a deep purple than the one we used, we did before. So you see you get a nice delineation. It looks like, it kind of looks like a horizon. 
and then the ground as it, and it gets lighter as it meets the for as it reaches the foreground at the very bottom. So once we're done, well, we've done all that, and and that's not to say you have to use just this many. Um, you can use as many colors on these as you want, and this can get really complicated really fast. Just know that the more colors you use on this, the larger your file size is going to be at the very end. So you're um, if you're using this on like a say a thumbnail or something like that, your thumbnails specifically for YouTube have a file a file size requirement, and it can't exceed that file size. So you want to be very careful with uh, how much detail you put into just your text because it's gonna it's gonna um, make you not be able to put too much into your thumbnails. All right, so there it is. We've got the uh, we've got the text ready to go. We we'll click on the check mark to save those changes, and now we're gonna scroll over and we're going to go to the stroke. And you can think of stroke as just like a uh, as a border for the text, right? Click on enabled, and the default's gonna be black. It should always be black, and I, uh, that's usually what I use, but in this case, um, it really depends on the text that I'm using, let's be honest. Uh, so you could do gradients for these as well, uh, but for these I typically use solid colors. I'm gonna go with this orange color here. It's the default. You can do you know any color you want, you think looks good. Uh, but I'm probably going to go with the stroke width of 10, and that's going to be the thickness of the line for the stroke. Uh, once that's done, we'll click on the check mark to save it. Next thing we're going to do is click on Inner Shadow, click Enabled, and I like to go with black on this one as well. Set the blur radius to zero, and then on your offset Y, if you do this, it's going to give you some depth to your text, right? Um, let's, let's go with seven. That looks pretty cool. Go ahead and click on the check mark on the right to save those changes. And that's pretty much it for the basic text that we're doing. Uh, now, if you notice, the canvas again is a green color and we don't want that. We want it to be a transparent PNG with just the text. To do that, you look at the bottom tab there, you have an option for layers, and you'll click on that. It's the two, it looks like two pieces of paper sitting on top of each other, kind of. You click on transparent, and that removes our background completely. Now, now that that's all done, we click on the save button at the top, click on save as image, make sure the format is PNG, that is the default, and then width and height is what you set it at, 1920, 1080. Again, you can use whatever um, resolution you want. The higher resolution, the bigger the file size. Save to gallery, and, and also remember that if you have, if you start with a high resolution, when you scale it down, it will not pixelate, but if you scale it up, it still will pixelate. Okay, save to gallery. Now, if you've never saved anything in Pixel Lab, you won't have a folder for Pixel Lab, but once you save something, it creates that folder for you, so you should have it in your phone once you do that. All right, that being said, we are going to move on into Photoshop CC, which is PSCC 2019. Now, when you open this program for the first time, you will not have any of these little folder icons that I have set. I have overlays, random thumbnails, all that good stuff. This will be blank. You'll have to create all this on your own. You make, you know, uh, you separate what your projects are. I have thumbnails, banners, etc. Um, so, what you're going to want to do once you create the folders for your projects, you're going to click into that folder, and then you're going to set the file size um, for your uh, blank document. Right? Click on the little button here at the bottom of the menu, blank document. And I like to set this for my thumbnail sizes, same as we did for the text, 1920, 1080, right? Now I already have a thumbnail blank already in here, so we're not gonna do that. Now when you start, <clears throat> you are going to, it's gonna look like this. You are not gonna have a background, it's gonna be a transparent canvas. In order to create a, uh, a black background, or even a white background, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna go into um, 
the layers button, click on the plus button to add a layer. Go into photo, oops, go into photo layer and photo library. And then you're just gonna go anywhere on your phone that has a, like a rectangular shaped PNG. In this case, I'll use my dirty lounge PNG. And you can move this around like this. Um, and then you're gonna want to resize your PNG so that it covers the entire canvas, right? Once you've done that, you click on the check mark button to save, and it crops out anything that is excessive over the canvas, right? So now that you've done that, we're gonna click on the slider icon at the top. And on this menu, we're gonna go into brightness and contrast. You're gonna set brightness and contrast both to negative 100%. This will give you a purely back black background. Now, if you do brightness to 100%, it'll give you a purely white background. Go ahead and click on the check mark when you're done. And this is what it's going to look like when you have your background set. You'll, you, can get you can remove the, uh, the transparent layer by clicking on the little layer options here and just click the little garbage can to delete it, right? All right. We're gonna click on the plus icon here under layers again. Go to photo layers and photo library. And you're going to navigate to the Pixel Lab folder that I was talking about earlier. Now, Pixel Lab's kind of weird um, when you go, or uh, PS Touch is kind of weird. Whenever you create something in a folder, it's gonna put the newest ones all the way at the bottom instead of at the top. I don't know why it does that. It's like the only program I know of that does it. It's kind of weird. Uh, but just know that that's stuff's in reverse. So you're going to have to look for stuff that's new all the way at the bottom. Uh, go ahead and click on the text that we created earlier. Click on add. And there we go. We've got our text. It's kind of cool. It's a little bit simple still though, right? So first thing I want to do is make these colors pop a little bit more than they are. We're going to go to the sliders icon at the top menu again. Click on saturation. And you're going to mess with the slider over here, or you can use, you know, click on the number and, and change it to however you want. I think in this case, 75. Yeah, 75 looks pretty good. We're going to save that. Go ahead and click on that. Save it. And now, click on your layers icon and add another layer. We're going to duplicate this layer so that we have two layers of text that are the same, right? Click on the Done button, and then you're going to click on the FX button. Click on Glow. And I like to start with one for text for the blur. And that's how much it, it, um, it, it, it goes out from the outer edge of the, uh, the actual text itself. And we're going to choose the color white. Go ahead and click OK. We're going to do that three more times. One, two, and glow three. Now if we zoom in, we see that gives us a nice little white outline all the way around our text. First thing I want to do is go back and select the layer with the original text that doesn't have the glow layer on it. We're going to click on the edit button at the top next to done. Click select pixels and you'll see it's outlining all the text there. We're going to then select the glow layer and we're going to click clear. Now what this does is clears just the text that we had selected from the glow layer. So all we have is the glow um, and then clicking anywhere outside of the selected uh, text will deselect everything for you. Now, <clears throat> once you've done that, we're going to click on the FX button again, click on glow. This time we'll go with like 16 and we're going to change the color to an orange. Again, that's going to be red 255 and green 135. Click OK. And we're going to do that again where we select the pixels from the original text and remove that from the glow layer uh, because when you do glow it does it in both directions from from the line on the outside of the text so think of the outside of the text as a per, like a um, 
a periphery. And then when you click on glow, it moves in both directions from that single line. So it'll move inward and outward from the text. Now once we've done that, we just have our text and we have our glow and it's only moving outside. But that's not all we're going to do. We're gonna do one more glow. And this time we're going to make it like 45, give it a nice sheen, and we're gonna make it completely red. Click on the check mark to finish. Pretty cool, right? But we are not done yet. You're gonna click on the layer, um, layer icon again, and this time you're gonna click on the, the little layer edit tab and click on the drop down under blend mode and choose Linear Dodge Add. And what Linear Dodge does is it brings all of the colors from layers that are below the Linear Dodge and brings them forward. So it gives you a nice nice glow that looks a lot like, um, say like neon lights, kind of. But that's it. Pretty simple, right? Um, we took a very, a very, very simple font and made it into something that's kind of extraordinary. But there's many other ways to do this. There's a lot of other techniques that you can use to kind of tweak this. But for now, I think this is the most basic one that's going to get a lot of people started on their journey into making better text. But that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned some stuff. And don't forget, if you like the content, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, that helps me know that I need to make even more of these again these tutorials down in the future so aside from all that guys i appreciate you being here if you made it all the way through the video i really appreciate it and you guys have a great day we will catch you in the next one peace